Greetings in Jesus' name. We're glad that you're here with us today. We thank God that you are, we are, you are joining us from all the different parts of the world, from all the continents. We're glad that you are here and we know that this is the place of transformation. This is the place where the word of the Lord will come to you. And as it comes to you, it will align us. It will adjust us. It will unlock whatever that God has already put inside of your life. We must always be at a place, not just at the place that we don't have it and we're receiving, but if we also understand that the word that is coming to us is a word of germination. That means it's germinating whatever that is already inside of you. The posture and the mentality that we must always take is that this is God speaking to us and we don't want to be familiar. We don't want to just say that this is another word. I want us to turn our Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. To the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, it tells us the plan that God has for us every day. The plan that God has for us every day of our life. Because sometimes if we are not intentional for the day, if we are not intentional, that means if we don't have a plan, we don't have a goal, we don't know what God wants to do in the 24 hours. Many times our mind has goals, has plans for what is one year ahead or six months ahead, but the immediate day will determine what will happen in the future. In the 24 hours that we have in a day, if we are not intentional, what will happen is routine will take over your life and my life because our minds have a default pattern. The default pattern of our mind is habit. We had the yesterday's habit will become today. Today's habit will become a reality tomorrow in every aspect of our lives. But in the word of God, in the word of the Lord, God speaks to us and tells us what is his idea, what's his plan that he has for us every day. Verse 18, but we all with un well, unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. In the mind of God, in the mind of the Holy Spirit, we find that he wants to transform us. He don't want us to be the same. Sometimes in the subconscious mind, in our conscious mind, we have already accepted this is who we are. I want to say to you that you and I will be transformed from one level to the next level. Every aspect of your life, every skill that you have, every, uh, every thought that you have, God wants to take you to the next level. He does not want us to stay the same. Why is it that we stay the same? The Bible says in verse 18, it says we all with unveiled face. What is that unveiled face? Let's look at verse 14 and verse 14 will give us the understanding what is an unveiled face. In verse 14, it says, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. What is the Bible talking about with the unveiled face? It's talking about a mind that is blinded without Christ, a mind that is limited, a mind that pulls everything, listens to something and say, I can't do that. A mind that is not in Christ, a mind that does not translate all things through Christ. That's the unveil. That is the unveil face. But the veil that Paul is talking to the book, to the people in Corinth, is that and he said, until today, you're blinded because there's a veil. What is the veil? The veil is we pull everything to our personal self. We pull everything. Why do we pull ourselves to everything to ourselves? Because there's a record in your mind of yesterday's failure. But I want to say to you today that everything that comes to us must come to us to the understanding that it is Christ in us that is going to do it. Not you, not me, but the Christ inside of your life is going to rise up 
capture the word that God is going to give you today and break every cycle of defeat, break every cycle that is not on our life every day, cycle of death and defeat must be broken in our life and we can rise up to have daily victorious living. When there is daily victorious living, there will be stature every day. So I pray today that you and I, God will give us, God will give us such a spirit of understanding. He will make you see, he will make me see where are the places we need to adjust? Where are the places that we need to come to that place of understanding? What are, the, what are the revelations that we need so that the veil can be taken off? I pray today that you and I with unveiled faces will be beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? It's the word of God. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Let the word of God give you an image because whatever image you see in your mind, that's who you are, that's who I am. I pray today's word will wash away the old image and give you a new image so that you and I will go from glory to glory. God bless each and every one of you. I pray that we have a hearing ear, a seeing eye, and a heart that is tender before him. Over to you, Papa. The book of Jeremiah in chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hil Hilkiah, of the priests who were at Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It also, it also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of jo jo Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came also to me, saying, Behold, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. The word of the Lord must come to us in all seasons. The word of the Lord came during the days of Jehoiakim. That's the days of captivity. He came to us in the days of jo Jos Josiah, in the days of revival. Are you listening? Yeah. Whether it's in captivity or in revival, the word of the Lord has to come to us. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah when he was a young boy. A young man. Age is not a factor. Your conditions are not a factor. Thank you, Lord. Some heard it thundered, but you heard the voice of the Lord. Those of you awake or asleep, be careful. It's important that the word of the Lord come to us at all seasons, all times. It must come to us. Bible tells us in the days of Eli, the word of the Lord was rare. The visions were infrequent. Because there is coming a time and season where when the priesthood begins to lock the heavens or open the heavens, the way you function inside the church will begin to allow you to assess the things of heaven. Amen? And we also see that because he was the son of a priest, not a prophet, a son of a priest, he also knew what it means to approach God well, and that allowed the assess to become easier for him. Talk to me. Yeah. It's important. I'm not giving you a Bible study on Jeremiah, but bringing you to verse 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me also saying, Behold, I've, I have formed you in the womb, and I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. This is God's desire. No matter how much the word of God comes through us to others, it must come to us to form us and shape us and prepare us to become more and more equipped for the journey. This is one area of life that pastors and leaders often fail because we listen to the word of God for always for a message. We do not want to become the message. We want it to be applied into the lives of others, but we don't want to model it. The danger is this, because God forms us, he shapes us, he consecrates us, and he works upon us so that he can put us on an appointment. 
He put us on an assignment so that we can be a prophet to the nations. Now that's one level that's fantastic because all you need to do is model the word and speak the word. Model the word and speak the word. That is one level of ministry. That means God give you a message, you, you leave the message, you, you believe the message, you think the message, you develop the message, and you speak the message to others. That's one level. That's not the end. But most of us stay there. We like to travel around, travel from here and there, Sunday mornings and different churches, different platforms, trying to speak the word of the Lord to the people. That's great. That's one level. But there's another level that God's bringing us and developing us when the, the word of God can be processed in our lives. Are you listening? Because the word of God is going to be confronted with the word that comes from your mind. The word of God is going to be confronted by the voices that rise within your own heart. By the fears that rise in your own heart. So how much of that word is going to take authority into the spirit world depends very much on how we allow the word to process itself. So God speak the word to Jeremiah and said, before I formed you, before you were born, I consecrated you, appointed you. Then I said, these are the things that destroy what God has said. You saying. The voices inside you, the voices inside your mind, the voices in your past. I said, God said, but now I, what I say is going to reduce me and remove me from the assignment and from the appointment. That's why even though God speaks great things about us in our future, yet we become less and less capable to measure up to the assignment. The more God speaks to us, the more we feel small instead of becoming feeling bigger. Are you listening? Every time God continues to speak to you, you feel smaller, you feel weaker, you feel like you're unable to do it. You cannot rise to the challenge because there are too many voices on the inside short-circuiting what God is saying. And God said to Jeremiah, warn him, Jer Jeremiah, if you keep stumbling over what I'm saying to you, you will fall flat before the people you're ministering to. You will subject yourself to people pressure. Are you still breathing? You subject yourself to people pressure. He said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, don't say you're a youth. God's not asking you to walk in self-denial. He's asking you to rise above self-power. He don't want you to go and tell everybody you're old either. You're not allowed to say you're young. Neither are you allowed to say you're old. You're allowed to say that you are his appointed choice. Because everywhere I send you, you shall go. All that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you from them and to deliver you from yourself. Then he stretched out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to, dis to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plan. This is total transformation. To speak the word and leave it to the, to the whims and fancies of those who hear our word is different. To speak the word and to be putting your hands in there to really do what God is saying and have the authority to act like God on the planet earth is another level altogether. It's one thing to prophesy the word to Mexico and let the word of God go ahead. It's another thing to go in there and build Mexico. To build every infrastructure, to pull up, to pull down, to push back, to create the space. That means you actually go in and become part of the reality of what God has spoken to you. So you become the hands and feet for that word to work. Isn't that important? There's another level. Not only a prophet to the nation, the prophet over the nations. That is a stature that God will begin to put into our lives. When you allow personal transformation to take place, your fear is broken. Are you listening? Your fear is broken. Your anxieties are broken. You are able to handle yourself, your, your youthfulness. You're able to handle your past. You're able to handle the weaknesses of your life. Are you listening? You're able to handle your fears. You're able to see things and answer God as a man. What do you see? I see a rod of an almond tree. You've seen well. And to be able to become mentored by him. 
to go to the next level. Are you listening? Yeah. It is this personal walk with Him that processes the power of God upon your life. Are we hearing? He said, now gird up yourself in verse, verse 17. Now gird up your loins and arise and speak. As I said to you, this is not my, my text this morning. I'm just laying the foundation to let you know why it's so important that God speak to you. Don't just read the Bible for others. The Bible was not meant for others. It was meant for you. The word was given to them. They, they chew that word and begin to partake the word. They ate the scrolls, not just read the scrolls. It's important for us. He said, gird your loins and rise and speak to them. All which I command you, do not be dismayed before them, or I will, I will dismay you before them. Now behold, I've made you today a fortified city, and as a pillar of iron, and, and as walls of bronze, against the whole land, to the, to the kings of Judah, to his princes, to his priests, to the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you, for I am is with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Against every strata of society, the kings of Judah, the princes, the priests, the people, the false prophets, whatever level there is, God said, I'll protect you from every strata. In verse 18, and I'll make you a wall, make you a pillar, make you a city. Are you hearing me? If it's like an army that is coming, then I'll make you a fortified city. If it's individuals that are coming, I'll make you a, a pillar of iron. If there are groups of people coming, I'll make you a wall. They will never be able to cross. It's amazing. God make us ready for the task. So do not say in your heart that it is difficult. Don't say the assignment God is giving to us is difficult. It's not possible. It cannot be done in this environment. It can be done. It must be done and we will do it. The reason is because God prepares us. He forms us, fashions us. It is not easy because you look around about you, you cannot put, attach yourself to who can help you, but the who who sends you is the one who's going to help you. He's going to build it into yourself, into your life, so that you become fo like a fortified city, an iron, iron wall, iron pillar. Amen? A, 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 a wall of bronze. He's going to make you sufficient for the task. Whether we are old or young does not matter. Whether we know the word of God in full context or does not, does not matter. Because God is about to prepare you for the task. Are you listening? Yeah. That's why to me I'm excited because of what God is going to do in this, in this, in this session. Because he's going to prepare your life and prepare my life for the days ahead. Because he's going to personally mentor you. He's going to ask you what you see. He's going to ask you what you feel. He's going to speak to you, change your life. Give you access to the things of heaven so that you become better and better and better. So that you never have to depend on men. Never have to depend on men. Not even on me. So that you have direct connections. My job is to fix you up with him. So that you begin to hear the word of God and confirm continually. So that process of the hearing the voice of God. But the other process is that you have to make sure all other voices die inside you. The voices of fear must come to an end. The voices of frustration must come to an end. The voices of anxiety must come to an end. The voices of other people pushing you over the cliff must come to an end. When that begins to happen, then we have the two fun functioning together. One, God's word is speaking to you and there is no other voice. The message that you hear becomes your message. <coughs> now the message is mixed. Is a message that God has given to you and there's another message coming in. No, it cannot happen. Maybe you should try something else. Moa is not the only place. It's not the spiritual Makkah. You should go somewhere else. Maybe in America, go to Willow Creek. Maybe go and see some, some of these conferences in Colorado. Maybe you should go to Singapore. Maybe you should go to America, England, Europe. You should go somewhere else. They, all the while continually another voice. This is insufficient. What you have is just one level. There's another level. Somebody came to talk to one of our Isaac pastors and said, Dr. Jonathan David is a prophet. We are apostles. So if you follow us, you come to the next level. The guy followed him and uh, lost the whole church. I don't know why we get continually duped because we think there is always something better on the other side. Don't want to process. There is nothing better except the one that 
thing that God spoke to you is the thing that is the best for your life. Are you listening? God is merciful to speak to us so that everything inside us can come to an end. Amen? Everything in, around in our lives can come to an end. Write this down. The power of the past must be broken. The power of the past must be broken. The powers that control you and shape you in the past. The powers of the past must be broken. The powers that control you and shape you in the past. Made you who you are now. You subject to a God of the past. The circumstances of the past. Is that power you got to break? Because... 99% of our life is part of the past. Until this very morning, it was called yesterday. And yesterday is the past. Even though we learn good things, but those, some of the good experiences we have is insufficient. Because you don't want to try something better. Because we had a good experience. Are you listening? And because you had a good experience with something, you don't want to try new things because... You're afraid that you might miss the good things and go into something bad. So experiences are not, not always a great teacher. Sometimes experiences can limit you, frighten you, and make you more cautious. But we have to break the power of the past. The past cannot hold us. What God is speaking to us is what should draw us, should woo us forward, get us to get closer to Him. Sometimes you've been in a church for a long time and the pastor and all the pastors have been unkind to you, hurt you, frustrated you. You go into a church that God really wants you to be in, then you still have all these porcupine spikes in your, in your life because you're always defensive. Oh, they hurt me all this while. This one will be the same too. And thereby you mess up your present with the past. My father-in-law had a problem when I married mom. Had a serious problem because his niece married an Indian man and he was a drunkard, abused her, and attacked her. And before long, the marriage broke up. So, when an Indian man married his daughter, he was like nightmare. He could not fight me because he knew it was God's will because my mother in law had a dream. So, he couldn't pass his wife, even if he disagreed. It was difficult for him because for, for many years we had this struggle. I did everything as kind as I could be. And before long, things began to change because he saw the way I treated mom, the way I treated the family, the way I honored them, the way I went back home, took bus, brought, out, brought out my daughter across many hours journey by bus. We didn't have a car at that time. But continually being kind, serving the house, clean the house, mop the house, sweep in the house. To win his heart until all fear is broken. All fear is broken. I know what it means because people have bad experience and they all the while looking to confirm their bad experience with you. I think one day he is also going to fall. One day he is just going to be just like them. It's the past that holds them. Sometimes they are afraid to join. They are afraid to connect because of the past. You've been hurt by so many other Networks, you want to join Isaac, you, 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 you reckon it will be one of the same. It's only a matter of time. They all show their true color. It is this thing that you need to break. The power of the past. There is, a, there is a spirit that controls the past. That has formed you, shaped you, guided you into a mold that you cannot escape from. And so your future becomes a straight line. Your past, your present and your future becomes a straight line. The devil conditions you so that you cannot break free to do what God wants you to do. Your mother, your, 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 your family members, none of them went to university, so you will never go. Your children will never go too. Why? Because you've been conditioned in your mind. So this morning, I want to break, help you break this cycle of defeat. This cycle of defeat has to be broken. It's in every one of us. Whether you like it or not, it's in every one of us. But to different measures. Are you listening? Yes. So can I help you? Can, yes. I, can I give you some clear demonstration? I'm telling you, if you know what I know and you see what I'm demonstrating for you, 
it will set you free completely. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. It will set you free completely. That's why it's important for you to remember what you see, remember what you hear, because by coming out of the past, you have already become victorious. Don't talk about going into the future. Just by coming out of the past, you're already victorious. To break free from the past, you're already a victorious. You cross the line. You cross the line of change. You're becoming changed. You're becoming transformed. You're becoming something fresh, something new. You're evolving. The familiar spirits cannot hold you. That's why bondages will break immediately in your life. Spiritual dimensions over controlling your life will be broken. Emotions will no longer be the same. Your emotions suddenly begin to have a wider space. You have greater freedom like you never felt before. Because it's no longer oppressed. Your mind won't be oppressed. You can think in areas you cannot think before. All of a sudden, your thought patterns begin to become sharper, quicker. And that also will lift a lot of pressure from your physical body. Because your condition in your mind, in your emotions, in your ways, in your behavior pattern, every area you're just blocked, blocked, blocked in, into the straight and narrow where the devil wants to kill you. That's why most of us become linear. Our mind becomes linear. Our behavior becomes linear and we become very predictable. We're not fresh. After a short while, your relationship becomes boring. Nobody wants to relate with you because you're just like that forever and ever. Amen. Not the good way. When he says the angel saw them, saw God, cried holy forever and ever. Amen. Every time they saw him, they saw another aspect of holiness. But for us, we are predictable. We never want to try anything in a different way. Surprise. But you serve coffee, and you don't have that particular coffee they don't want. Just for the sake of hospitality, it makes life easy for them. But we can't step in because I, 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 it's okay, I don't want. I mean, you talk and talk and talk and talk, discuss of all the coffees that are there, Arabia coffee, you no know, Java coffee, no Salon coffee. No, I don't like that, it's a bit bitter. Chinese coffee, oh, it's too acidic. More coffee, oh, it's too strong. You just need your coffee. Get out of that rut. For the sake, just get something. Drink half a cup at least. Make life easy for others. But we just can't because we are stuck in a linear mode. Are we hearing? That's, that's just coffee. Don't talk about other food. The other aspects. I'm not asking you to take what, is, what you're allergic to because we don't want you to be in the hospital. We don't want you to be hurt. We don't want you to be in a place where you're sick. But things that you can try. But we can't because past holds us back. So are you ready for the cycle? Yes. Can I show you what happens in the cycle of defeat? All right, read with me Ephesians chapter 2 and then we're going to dig in. So you know personal transformation is important because you cannot go to another stature from being a prophet to the nations to become prophet over the nations until some of, something of personal transformation takes place in our hearts. Is that right? That's why beyond looking at others, look at yourself. I go through personally the nodes of GLS and ITIP. I personally go through every one of them. Because I fear and tremble that God speak through me and that I be a castaway. I fear that because I know God. God is not a respecter person. If he's speaking through you, he expects you to be the first one to do it. That's the presumption of Moses. He thought he could preach and preach freedom to Israel without circumcising his son. God came in the day, in the night to kill him. I wish that God came in the night to, get to kill some of you. That you'd be running around and your wife is helping you and say, you bloody husband. That's what she said. You're going to make me a widow. If you are responding to God, she was a Midianite woman. She knew exactly what to do. She knew the ways of God to a certain measure. She said, why don't you do things right, Moses? 
You want to deliver Israel, you don't even know how to deliver our son. She hit him with the pillow. I know you don't have that in the Bible. This was a domestic quarrel, you don't want to get involved. But she hit him with the pillow. This is our boy. You put our boy in the range of fire. You want to be in the ministry and you put our children, our family in the range of fire. You silly sausage, get out of my house. He said, I'm going to my father's house. I'm going to protect myself. And she went home. She didn't follow Moses to Egypt. Because if this is the kind of start, you don't know what's going to happen with the end. She said, I'm not taking any risks. I'm taking my boy. You, you finish your assignment, come pick me up. If not, I'll stay with my father. Consider you dead. Jethro, please, go read your Bible. I'm, I'm not joking to you. That's what, she, that's what happened to her. Zipporah went to stay with her father Jethro. Did she follow him to the assignment? No, because there was no assurance that this guy is going to make it. He said, God spoke to me in the desert. He revealed himself. She said, okay, fine. Women don't believe men too quickly. No, no. If this is the beginning, the end will be worse. I better escape. All right, I better escape because this, this, this is something that you and I need to understand. Amen? We need to have things built into our hearts so that we can be ready. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 1 to verse 3 and then show you the cycle of defeat and break it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them you two form, all formerly lived in the lust of the, our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. This is a cycle of defeat. Are you listening? This is a cycle of defeat. And let me just take you little by little into what is needful. I need the first volunteer. But before you come, you need to have a TV face. All right, first volunteer. Come on quickly. I need the first. Come on. First volunteer, come up here, Anthony. How unsure you are of yourself. Uh, just stand right here. The cycle of defeat begins like this. This is sin nature and sin habit. The cycle of death, the cycle of defeat begins like this. This is a hu human individual with sin nature and sin habit. And because of sin habit and sin nature, everything of demonic power can pass through him. Everything of hell can pass through. Everything of sin nature could pass through. Anything of the world system can pass through. Because of this reason, this individual becomes vulnerable on planet Earth. This is the first level, all right? Sin nature and sin habit. I'm going to show you the second, third, fourth as we go up to number seven. All from that scripture. Sin nature and sin habit. And because of sin nature, sin habit, his life is messed up, his life is in darkness, his life is in defeat. Everything that Adam brought into this world can attack this man. Everything that can happen to man can happen to you because of this sin nature and sin habit. Are we listening? And it's very, very dangerous for us to live like that. That's why you need to become born again, set free, become healed, become delivered as an individual. Because if... Sin nature and sin habit is not controlled and you're not free from it. What is going to happen is that you're going to get stuck in the second level. I need second volunteer. Good. We need somebody on the second level here to help us understand these are the hierarchies that is established on the earth. The different hierarchies and chains of structure of chain of command. 
Are you listening? First you have an indi individual with sin habit and sin nature. Then the second level, all right, the, s the second level is the human hierarchies and institutions. You have different kinds of chain of command, chain of, uh, chain of command and, and different kinds of institution and structures like homes, jobs, factories, vocations. So what happens is that this man who has sin nature and sin habits in his life is placed under structures like this. And areas of weaknesses in his life become manipulated in his work, in his job, in his family, in his home, so that continually he stays bound by sin nature. But this time under an authority that is beyond himself. You watch how people live in this world. They live as individuals, but they're stuck in a work. They're stuck in a job. And everything that happens in the job is basically exposing these things, the needs in their own life. Are we hearing? By the time I finish the seven, you can see how it through the infrastructure of the earth, the people are kept in a rut. They are unable to break free. Even though they want to serve God, they can't because they are stuck in the hierarchy. They are st stuck in the institution. Maybe in, even in a home, married the wrong person. Are you listening? Married the wrong person, staying in the wrong home. And having the mother-in-law there, brother-in-law there, the, the brother-in-law that just came out of jail is also in the same house. The drug addict's son-in-law. Are you listening? So whatever the, the, is so here, it becomes more and more vulnerable as they stay under the institution. That's why at this level you need to understand, if, if, we, if we are stuck in sin nature, the, our jobs will become the next tool the enemy will use. To hold us down and keep us down. Your job, your vocation, the institutions that you get involved in, the clubs you get involved in. So whatever is in sin nature and sin habit will become an instrument in the hands of the next, next level of hierarchy and, and institution. Are you listening? So it will hold the man and the man will stay under cause. Because now as an individual he has weakness. But as an institution they have authority. This is where it begins. A lot of individuals are running, running wild, running free, come with me. Running wild, running free, until they become part of an institution. In the, in the earth, you don't have no, any other choice. You will have to work. You will have to labor. You are born in a home. You are born in a family. You cannot escape this. So your sin nature becomes more vulnerable. It's now become exposed to people. Not only people, but people in authority. Are you listening? Because authority comes as a spiritual dimension. So you can see what's going to happen. So you have a, an individual that is free on his own, but sin nature holds his life. And because of the reason, he's stuck in the hierarchy and the institution. Are you listening? Talk to me. Are you listening? This is very, very important because at this level, the person is already becoming exposed to his weaknesses, his grounds, and all those areas are becoming more and more. Holding him tighter and tighter. I need a third volunteer. Okay. Third, just three. Third one. Stand on this step here. The third volunteer is called the cause of this world. Cause of this world. You have an individual, you have an institution, you have a cause of this world. All these institutions are running a certain course. And all these calls are working on the basis of sin nature and sin habit. Are you following? Talk to me, are you following? I want you to capture this because you have to set your people free. By showing them the ways of this world, the cause of this world. Because the cause of this world controls a family. Every family on earth runs a certain kind of course. They are pressured in a certain way. And most of them in the same way. The same anxiety hits them. The same fear hits them. The, the problems in your house is a problem in their house. You are not free from it. You have money. You have rental that needs to pay. They also have rental that needs to pay. If they are not paying rental, they are paying bank loan. It's only a different name. You are still paying rental. But rental and loan is... Not different, it's the same. Bank owns your house. 
you are paying rent to the house, to, 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 to the bank, and you call it bank loans. But you're still stuck in a system. You have anxiety for your health, they have anxiety for resources. They have anx the, the anxiety. So the, the cause of this world controls the institutions. The institutions control the individuals. Are you staying? Are you staying on focus? So you can see the institutions, the stronger they are, the, the, the more hold they have on the individual. And the stronger the institutions abides by the cause of this world, the more they will hold the people. The stronger the institutions, the stronger the hold is on the people. The, 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 the stronger leadership in this institution, the more dictator, dictator type of leadership they have on people. So they hold the people tightly. They won't let them go. So people become oppressed. And the pressure on the individual becomes worse. Are you listening? And if the, if the institutions subscribe more and more to the cause of this world and the way of this world, they become more demanding on the individual. So before long, you are under work pressure. But it's not work pressure. The work is under pressure too. Your factory is also under pressure from the cause of this world. There's globalization. Are you listening? There's, there's international corruption. There's money laundering syndicates. There's drug cartels. There's all kinds of pharmaceutical companies that put pressure on, 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 on inventors and pressure on so many people. And so before long, the institutions come under the pressure of a moving world cause. Monetary markets begin to crash. The institutions are under heavy pressure. So the factory needs to either employ a few and sack the rest. So the individuals they hold, now they release them. They say, no, we cannot pay you compensation. We need you to go. And so you can see, every time the cause of this world begins to become impacted, the institution become impacted. The individuals become impacted. The final sufferers are the individuals. Are you listening? So when, when monetary crisis hits Europe, hits America, and all kinds of conditions take place around the world, currency crisis, what happens? Institutions suffer. But who is in the institution? Individuals. But because of their sin nature and sin habit, they are the most vulnerable people. The company can hire others. The company can hire a few and release the rest. So a lot of problems will begin to happen in individual homes and families because lives of people become affected by the changing cause of this world. Can you follow? Yes. Talk to me, can you follow? Yes. The cause of this world controls the institutions, the hierarchies, the chain of command, and the chain of command begins to put pressure on individuals who have been affected by sin nature and sin habit. They are the most vulnerable lot. And these institutions, they don't care. They have no desire to nurture and raise you up and bring you higher, they bring you lower because the cost of this world goes all the way down. I'll show you the cost of life goes all the way up. Every pressure that's placed from above will go all the way down to hit the individuals because the target is the individual under sin nature and sin habit. That's the target. In the cycle of life, the object of God's redemption is the individual. So you can see the cause of this world becoming heavier and heavier. Are you listening? Yes. It becomes heavier and heavier. So the world changes, the institution change, institution change. They displace and, and, and oppress the individuals. Are you listening? So the cause of this world, you have ideologies. They control the cause. Thinking patterns, secular humanism, communistic thinking, socialistic thinking, political ideologies, mental ideologies, and all kinds of things frame the cause of this world. So you can turn left, you can turn right, it can be going to the right, it can going be going to the left, but all that will affect the way institutions run, will affect the way institutions affect individuals. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? And that's why it's important for us to see at the, at the cause of this world, philosophies dominate. Ideas dominate. People are all the while thinking new thoughts. People are all the while thinking thoughts to shape the world, to form the world, to move the world in a certain direction. So the, so the cause of this world 
is a very important area for us to deal with if you're going to become free. Are you listening? Talk to me. Are you listening? Uh, I need a fourth volunteer. Come. Fourth volunteer. Thanks, Tony. We're not looking for bigger and bigger people, though. This is a spirit influence. The Bible said the cause of this world is influenced by a spirit. The cause of this world spread all across. And it does not go by individual. It goes by spirit influence. There is a spirit influence on the cause of this world. And the cause of the world influences the chain of command and the authority and the hierarchies. And the hierarchies influence the individuals on the ground. Are you listening? So the cause of this world is, is ruled over by spirit influence. That's why they influence larger areas. They influence entire cities. Entire cities think like that. Entire parts of the cause of this world or areas of this world, like all of Los Angeles, all of Seattle, all of San Francisco, they think a certain way. The whole region is affected. Are you listening? The whole village is violent. The whole village is violent. The whole village are just bad people. They keep on attracting. So there is a spirit influence that comes upon the course of this world. And this dimension of the spirit is what you and I need to understand. It is here that we break, start breaking powers. Because if this spirit influence don't affect, the cause of this world will not affect. So the power going down will become less and less. This is where we engage in battle. This is, uh, the cause of this world is where we teach. Are you listening? At the cause of this world is where we teach and change thinkings. Th change mindsets. It is at this hierarchy that we disciple and mentor. And bring them under authority so that they can be changed. As individuals, we bring them into salvation and relationship with God. Are we hearing? So it is at the spirit. The spirit controls the cause. The cause controls the hierarchy. Hierarchy controls the individual. The spirit dimension is where we engage in warfare. This is already coming to the heavenly realm. Are you listening? It is at this heavenly realm that we need to engage in spiritual warfare to pull down the powers of the air. The spirit that is influencing is cut off here. Are you listening? The spirit influence conditions the course of this world, which conditions the institutions that controls the individual. The spirit controls, uh, conditions the philosophies, the philosophies con condition the institutions, the institutions are control, controlling the people. Are you following? It is at this area that a new, new spirit has to come forth. Are we following? As long as you are a believer and you don't allow the Holy Spirit to work upon your life, you are no different from this sinner. You're an individual Christian baptized in the Holy Spirit, but nothing else is happening in your life. You're still stuck in the institution. You're still running the course of this world. When it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, it means coming out from this. It is not staying here and hope to survive. You cannot stay in this course and survive. You can't. You have to come out of it and become connected to heaven in a different way. Even though you're in this world, you're of this world. You're not of this world. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You're an individual under the institutions of this world, but which is under God's government is in your life. You, they con don't control you. You just adapt and stay. You're in Babylon, but not a captive. You're in Egypt, but you're a prince. You're in prison, but you prosper. You're in the world, but you're not of this world. 
nothing in this world. Even though you go to the same office and work, but you're not under them. Are you listening? You go to the same factory and work, but you're not. Because there's a government of God inside you. You are in, but you're out. You're baptized in water. As you get into the water, the water don't get into you. Are you listening? You can be in the world, but the spirit influence of the world is not upon your life because you don't follow the course of this world. Mm. You follow something else. You, call, you follow the, the purposes of God, the, the, the destiny that God is in, in for your life. So your whole life changes. Do you understand this? I want you to capture this, learn this, digest this, teach this, show this. Because people in our churches need to know that they, they are... We are not asking them to run to a mountain. We are not the new Gnostics. Are you listening? We are not saying that material world is lousy. It's all evil. Only spiritual things are good. No, we, are, we can be here and rise above it. We can be in Egypt, but we have the best of the land of Egypt. We're in Egypt, but we are learning skills. We are not marking time for 430 years, but we are becoming better and better and better and better. And we're going to get out of Egypt without lifting a finger against the Egyptians. God will strike the Egyptians. That when we get out, all the wages of 430 30 over years will come into our hand. Are you listening? So we, we don't have to be afraid of this system. Because it doesn't control us. Are you listening? That's why it's important. You can see the spirit that influences the philosophy. Philosophy influences the institution. Controls the individual. So that's how they keep them in. Are you following? So you, you, you can be in this world, but of this world. Can you understand this? Because I need to show you the other half called the cycle of life. Then you can see for forever. That you can live in this kind of environment and yet not be oppressed. You don't have to bow to the kind of philosophies that control your thinking pattern. You don't have to think the way of this world. You can think the course of the kingdom. The purposes of God. So there is a spirit influence. Alright? Is that right? Okay, I need the fifth volunteer. The fifth volunteer. Speak enough, it's called the powers of the air. So we have the powers of the air. There's a spirit influence, there's philosophies, there are thought patterns, and institutions and individuals. We have the power of the air. Are you listening? The power of the air uses a spirit influence to control the philosophies which control the institutions. The powers of the air uses a spirit influence to influence the philosophies and mindsets of the world that it controls the institutions that oppresses the people. And we have powers of the air, they take their place in cities. They are resident. These are resident spirits. Are we listening? The powers of the air are resident spirit. They are called powers. The executive force of satanic kingdom. They are the powers of the air. Are we listening? It is very essential for you to understand because in every city there are powers. All right, the executive board. The legislative one is one. Then you have the executive one. You have the judicial, legislative. Is that right? And then you have the executive board. That these are the powers of the air. They are the ones who enforce. How do they enforce? They use a spirit. Spirits that operates in the sons of disobedience. They use familiar spirits. That's the key word you need to know. Spirits that are familiar with you. So what happens is, because the individual lives a certain way of lifestyle, he actually is programmed. And he is programmed for defeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. He thinks he is successful because of the philosophies that tell him he is successful. It's perspective. Yeah, yeah. I'm blessed. I don't need God. I have all the money. 
is coming soon. I don't need to follow Jesus. I, I'm not sick. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I pray in my heart. All God is the same. So he doesn't feel vulnerable because the philosophies protect him. But deceive him. Lie to him. But that's what he doesn't know. He feels he's okay. He doesn't need God. Because the philosophies go ahead and confuse their mind. You and I don't reach their mind and change them. You don't speak to them. You don't talk. And they're not exposed to light. So they live, continue to live in darkness. It's called perspective. It's called, it's called the way you think. So a lot of people are protected by the way they think. And they think they're okay. Because they think they're okay. But if they think they're not okay, even when they're okay, they're afraid. Is that true? Even when they are okay, they have all the money. They're attacked by a spirit influence all the way called the spirit of poverty. What happened? They go crazy. They have to work hard. They have to labor. Even if they have money, they feel frightened because they've been attacked by a spirit of poverty. So the spirit influence is coming through and there's a certain ideology that they have picked up that tells them that what they have is insufficient. Because they have watched institutions who had a lot that suddenly suffer. So now as an individual, fear hits them crazy and therefore they feel that no matter how much I earn, it's not enough. I need to cushion myself, get to prepare for the rainy day, for the storm, for the tsunami. Now they have tsunami too. Not just rain, heavy rain, cats and dogs. So before long, the individual becomes attacked and harassed. And so he, he, he finds himself completely vulnerable. No matter what he does, he's still going to be a victim of this environment. No matter what he does. The hook is on the jaw. He cannot escape. There is a power that controls the spirit. The spirit influences the cause. The cause influences the institution. The institution influences the individual. Are you listening? Sometimes the individual is not very highly connected to the cause, to the hierarchies. They are loose. They are in this job, that job, this job. But there's a philosophy that uh, uh, why they behave this way. They don't want to be part of anything. They're not, they're not responsible for family they, because they have a philosophy that they're just sperm donors. So they rise above this, so they are not connected to home, to family, nothing yeah. whatsoever, because the philosophy controls them. Yeah. But nevertheless, there is a spirit that controls the philosophy, that controls them. Mm-hmm. Even though they said, I don't want to be under authority, I don't want to work for any man. I want to be an employee, I want to, I, I want to be free on my own, I will not work for any man. So they don't want to be in an institution, but they are still controlled by a philosophy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They think they are not under control, they are still under control. Mm-hmm. Are you listening? Don't look so depressed. This is not about you. The last state of this person will be worse than the first. As the years go by, his state is changing and you'll be very surprised what is taking place. So you have the powers of the air that controls the spirit. So they take resident place. And the nature of this spirit is going to be the nature of the city. The nature of this spirit is going to be the nature of the city. They call them the strong men. Are you listening? They call them the strong men. But it's nothing to do with the church. It's just telling you that they're gaining power because they have set their structure well. Their spirit, the philosophy of the town. Are you listening? Everybody thinks about the same. In the neighborhood, in the area, in a particular village, everybody thinks the same. And they can fellowship and drink coffee and talk about the th- same thing again and again. Every day talking the same thing. And agreeing with one another. Then more people are talking about more of the same thing. And never feeling bored. The devil keeps them in that philosophy, controls them so that the whole line of structure is not going to be impacted. Churches are the same. If they're not careful, 
They have a spirit that influences them, keeps them in the tradition. They keep doing the same thing again and again in a routine, not out of it. They just stay like that forever and ever. Amen. The institution remains the same. The oppression remains the same. The people will never be free because the thinking patterns are. That's, that's how the spirits that operate in denominations, in traditions, in human traditions, they lock on. It's a philosophy that holds the institution. It's an institution that holds the people. But there is a spirit influence. And there are powers up there. You can find the churches are traditional because the people there are traditional because the powers of darkness allows them to stay on course. They will not allow them to turn. No progress. So the, so the village in England will remain like the days of his grandfather. The grandfather can walk out of the grave and walk into the to the place and just fit in because it's never changed. There's no progress. There's no development. It's exactly the same. They can go in and buy bread and walk out feeling people will just feel like they're, they're, they are in their time. The grandfather's time is their time. T time stands still because the spirits of darkness, the powers of the air set their place, their position of authority. There's no way to escape. Are you listening? There's no way to escape because these people are already under the structure. You have the prince of the power of the air. Now we have, we have to have one more person here. Any wild looking people? Okay, you can have a radio face. Come, Michael. Because he looks bigger than this guy. Thank you. So you have the powers of the air. Then you have the prince of darkness. <laughs> now you, you must remember... Because he's a prince of darkness, he has chosen his powers well. The church pastors will choose leaders wrongly. Because their mind is not in just giving the position. The mind is in to transfer the spirit. Are you listening? If you don't learn anything, at least learn from the devil. Because he doesn't set things up wrongly. Because he has so few to work on, he only chooses his best. He doesn't have two-thirds of the angels, he has only one-third. So if he makes a choice, he has to make it work. And he works over time. So the prince of the power of the air chooses the powers. Is that right? The prince of darkness chooses the powers. The powers transfer spirit. Are you following? Yeah. I, I want you to see this. All right? I want you to see this. Learn this well. Because I took a long time to trying to figure this out to make sure it's simple enough for you. I thought through so that I can give it to you. So there's spirit influence and the influence of the spirit is in the doctrine. Yes, that's right. That's right. So as a senior pastor... You've got to choose your key leaders. And your key leaders must have the same spirit you carry to transfer the spirit dimension in the teachings that you give to them that will be able to help in the structure of the church that will bless the people. If you don't realize this, you choose any leader. You choose any leader who cannot transfer the spirit. The whole structure is going to be wobbly. That's why it's not about just church growth. Just have leaders, all right, cell group leaders, train the cell group leaders, give them class one, class two, class three, class four, and then after that, give them a certificate. Hallelujah. Our church is going to be in order. God bless you. You raise up a structure of leaders that don't transfer the spirit, but you only reproduce them like factory materials. 
Another Coke is on the line. Another Coke is on the line. Another leader has been produced because they went for class, advanced class one, advanced class two, advanced class three, the equipping class one, two, three, four. Then we have cell group leaders class that they've covered all. So they got the certificate. So we think, all right, we have the powers of the air, but no spirit. Not only they don't have spirit, but they don't have the doctrine. They don't have the teaching. They don't have the truth to influence the thinking pattern. They, do, they don't have the capacity. So what leader are you choosing? An empty one. Position, but no spirit. Position, but no truth. Position, but no, no power to transfer spirit. And so what do you get? An institution that is weak, that cannot guide the church members. So you have a structure. 542 cell group leaders. Last week we announced there were 500. Now there's 62 more. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're holding nothing. People pride in this. Because they don't know the devil is running the system all along. That's why if you bring the world into the church, you're doomed. Because that's how it works. So we have the prince of the power of the air and you have the prince of darkness. Are you listening? He chooses well because he wants everything to be held in line. He's interested in the people. Organizations can come, organizations can fall, kingdoms can come, kingdoms can fall. He doesn't care. Philosophies can change. Today could be socialist, tomorrow could be Republican, next day could be Democrat. He don't care. He don't care who you elect. That's why God's not interested in so many of these things. He don't care who you elect because today could be democratic thinking pattern, tomorrow could be Republican, today could be socialist, next day could be communist. He don't care the philosophy. As long as he has the institutions to control the people, to bring the people to where he wants. Are you listening? So philosophy has changed. Nations move out of communism and become socialists. But the people are still oppressed. Yeah. You can move away from monarch and go on to have your own republican government. You still are oppressing the people. Came out from one ideology to the next ideology. The institutions are the same. They haven't changed. They only changed the signboard, but they haven't changed the sign. They're still going down the pathway of hell. Are we listening? So we have the prince of the power of the air and we have the prince of darkness. So he cannot operate except he is in a certain realm. He cannot operate unless he's in a certain realm. He has to be in the heavenly places. So I need somebody out here for number seven. One more volunteer. Anyone who can, thank you, Emmanuel. <coughs> and this, all these things are like a, a equipment that cannot be plugged in unless you have the heavenly places. The way they operate in this structure is that they have to be in the spirit dimension in the heavenly places. Are you listening? Or else everything that they have structured cannot work. It is not a natural organization, it's a spiritual organization. So the prince of the power of the air is subject to the prince of darkness, and the prince of darkness operates from the heavenly places. Are you listening? Yes. All the operations, even for us, is going to be in the heavenly places too. But the situation is that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Are you listening? Okay, let me just take a proper position. This guy is so tall. Look a bit smaller. Go down to the next one. Uh, it's just the hair. If I had a hair like this, it should, should work. These are sons I have to look up to. You see how... How difficult it is. So the prince of the power of the air is controlled by the prince of darkness and the operational dynamics is a plug point. So you have all the equipments 
you have to have a plug point to plug it in. It is there that everything becomes functional. Are you listening? Satan was in, the, in, in heaven before he was cast down. He was Lucifer. Then he was cast down to the earth, but he could not rise up into the spirit world. But he won the battle in the Garden of Eden. He became a prince of this earth. Is that right? The ruler of this world because he took a contest with Adam. Adam was the prince of this earth, lost his seat in the election. Are we listening? So when that happened, he stationed himself on the earth and began to represent the earth. So when all the, all the angelic creation and all the parliamentarians of the earth and heaven ascended into heaven, Lucifer came along, Satan came along as a representative of his constituency called the earth. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. So the Holy Spirit tells us very clearly that when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, all these things was removed. All authority and power has been returned. So instead of positioning himself here in the earth and in the, hev in, in the spiritual atmosphere, he had to be cast out and banished in the heavenly places. So when God set up the structure of his son, he made him sit in the high above all principalities and powers. So it is in the heavenlies that they have been confined. Satanic force is confined here. And they are going to be judged here. If you deal with them here and win this battle, then you execute it here on this earth. Yeah. Bible says, whatever has been bound in heaven is bound on the earth. The moment you handle here, all these dimensions are going to break. Yeah. One by one, they're going to be dismantled so that Ultimately, we release the individual. Are we listening? So, Satan does not, is not able to set his kingdom anywhere. This is what you and I need to know. Because we think that when Jesus set up the kingdom, Satan is already on the loose. This is our problem. We listen to too many preachers that, are, that make you feel Satan is a free agent. He can go anywhere he wants and do anything he wants. No, 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 no. When Jesus sat at the right hand of God, I announce to you in Jesus' name that when he sat at the right hand of God, he made sure that Jesus was far above all principalities and powers. Far above all principalities and powers. And they, and the prince of darkness was far below in the heavenly places. That's how the stretch, structure of authority lies now. Satan has, is right down the food chain. Oh, you don't look that happy, huh? Because now you have to burn some of those books and stop listening to some of those creatures. Oh, I can see you like all those materials. You like those books. You want to, out in Jesus' name. What is your name? All the deliverance ministry have to be delivered from you. Why? Because when he set up that authority of the son as king of kings and lord of lords and established his kingdom, there is a structure. So when Jesus set it up, there is a structure. We, we are seated with him. We are seated with him in the heavenly places. And far below that is satanic kingdom. So that's how the structure is. No, in, no government authority structure excludes anybody from society. You're either one department, some department. You have to be under something. You cannot be a loose free agent. But there are so many church members who are free agents. They're not under anybody's authority. Even Satan is under authority. Okay. I, I don't know what you think, but this has got to erase this thought from your mind. That he is not free to do what he can and free to do what he wants. He is not free. He is not a free agent to do anything he wants. If he comes into our life to attack us, it's because God allows it or you allowed it. There's no other reason for it happening. 
He is not that powerful that he has all power. He is not that wise that he has all wisdom. He is not all present that he is omniscient. He is not. He is bound under this structure where he's, Jesus said at King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he has to stay under that end of the food chain. That's his Lord. He cannot escape that. But sometimes we act in battle, in spiritual warfare, like we have to deal with him. No, no, we don't have to deal with him. He is already dealt with by us being in the heavenly places. He finds his place down where he belongs. That's why in the days ahead, warfare gets lesser and lesser and lesser. Battle gets lesser and lesser and lesser because we are positioning ourselves together with Christ. And if you live there and don't live in the flesh, then you are actually living under the authority chain that is the right structure, not the wrong structure. The wrong structure is that we are down. The right structure is far above all principalities and powers in the heavenly places. So Jesus and us are seated in the heavenly places far above every principality and power. The prince of darkness is not high up contending, oops, oops, contending with, 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 uh, with us. He is not on the same level as us, but far below. Right at the bottom of the food chain. Not in the middle, but right at the bottom. But that structure is set. All things are not subject to us, but they all sub things are subject to Him. We see Jesus, so it is already subjected to Jesus. Oh, come on. That's the reason why you need to re-investigate your understanding on demonology, on spiritual warfare, on prayer, and all this aspect. You have to revisit these things. Because your position of attack is wrong. That's why you cannot win battles. That's why you struggle with things in life. You struggle with demonic powers. You struggle with sin. You struggle with sickness. You struggle with... All kinds of things that are coming from the hands of the enemy because you think he is free to travel anywhere he wants. He can fly anywhere he wants. No, he has been set in concrete. This is his place. He cannot move out of it. The only reason he move out of it is because we open opportunity. A door. We give him an advantage. But where is he subjected to? He is subjected to the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus said as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when Jesus said, I, I have all authority, all power, does that mean Satan is free from that? Good. What were you thinking when he said all authority and all power? Yes, all authority and power from people given back to Jesus, but the devil's power has never been given back. You've got to be joking. Sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies a footstool. Now it's already been subjected to Christ. It's not so subjected to us on this earthly plane because we don't understand our own structure of life. We are still stuck in the structure of the institutions of this world, still battling the philosophies of this world. We are still bound to think, sometimes we think Republican, other time I think we should support the Republican. I think we know we should be... I think because we, we, are, we are blacks, we support Democrats, is it? Are you listening? So, so we are still bound in this, this kind of philosophies and the, spirit, and the spirit of the power of the air continues to operate because we are still stuck in a worldly philosophy, not a kingdom philosophy. So we are still bound, we are not escaping very far. So the same powers operate because we are under their structure. Imagine if you are living in the kingdom structure, you're not under the structure. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And we are, we are connected to him. Are you listening? We are under his authority and power. Can you remember this? That's why this cycle of defeat is broken when you and I become born again. The moment you become born again... Are you listening? Follow me. The moment you become... Let me hold this, this side. My hand is not strong. 
when you become born again, you're free from that structure. And you're coming under the heavenly structure here. You bypass the entire structure. The prince of the power of the air is not there. But you're in the heavenly places where everything has to do. All things are subjected to Christ. That's why when you and I are born again, you are in the heavenly places together with Christ. Are you listening? And you're under this particular cycle. Can you be free? I want you to stand to your feet. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be a supernatural work of the Holy Ghost that will begin to come upon our lives, come upon our minds, so we become totally free from the whole of darkness. We say in Jesus' name, we are not part of the world system. We're not part of the world philosophy. We're not part of the spirits of darkness. We're not part of satanic domain. But we are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, a kingdom that cannot be taken. We are born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We are free from the cycle of death. We are free from the cycle of defeat. We are free to live a victorious life. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for the freedom that we now have in Christ Jesus. We thank you. Sin cannot hold us. Satan cannot hold us. Diseases cannot hold us. Darkness cannot hold us. The powers of the enemy cannot hold us anymore. Because we are free. Free to live under your rule. We are under your reign and under your dominion. And under your domain, Father, we thank you. We are no longer bound by sin. Every philosophy, every institution of this world, every sin nature, sin habit, and the prince of the power of the air, and the prince of darkness, and the spirits of darkness cannot operate upon our life because we are free. We are now receiving a new spirit. can work upon us and labor in us so that the kingdom of God can be established. Thank you, Lord. Set us free now. Set us free in our mind. Set us free from the philosophies of this world. Set us free so that we know nothing can happen. Because the devil has already been set in the structure authority. And is far below. You have made us far superior. High above all principalities and power. Above every dominion. Above every name. Above every power. Above every authority. You have set us above. And they are far below. We thank you. We are free. Free from the world system, free from the world structure, free from all the philosophies of this world and the ways of this world. We will not learn the ways of these nations, but we will learn the way of God. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and he will teach us of his ways. We will walk in his path and the law of God shall go forth from Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and thank him and praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise and thank him. Thank him, thank him. Hallelujah. We are free. We are free to serve him. Free to love him. Free to move in the dimensions of God. We are free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word. There we have the explanation that is so clear on how to live a life of freedom here on the earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's the liberty that as, 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 as uh, God is speaking to us, the liberty, the freedom. There are structures in this world that have lodged itself into our minds. And as we begin to become subjected to the authority of the word, the authority of Christ, the authority of the Holy Spirit. As we live under authority, we will have authority. And this is why it's important for us to begin to understand that, <clears throat> that everything was subjected to, the, to Christ. And if we subject ourselves to Christ, everything that was subjected to Christ will be subjected to us. That simply means in reality, what does it look like every day? It looks like this. The spirit of Christ, which is a nature, begins to rise in our mind. And as it begins to rise in our mind, it will pick up every structure that is not of God and break it. For example, when fear and worry enters our mind, it is a structure not of the kingdom. It is a structure of the world. It is a 
It is, the Bible calls it in Matthew chapter 13, it is the deceitfulness of riches. You know, it is the deceitfulness of riches that begins to bring deception to our mind to realize that money is what will make you rich. Money is what will give you joy. Money is what will give you peace. But this is the structure. This is what, this is what I believe. You know, I've not heard anybody teach in this manner, given us this understanding of the, of the spiritual structures that are in place that are causing our mind to be totally, totally dominated by the structures of the world. But we thank God for today. We thank God that the revelation that God has given to Papa, I don't know whether we can, I don't know, I hope, I pray that we really, really appreciate this session. You know, it's amazing to me. This session is in 2012. And 2023, it is still relevant. Why is it relevant? Because there is a prophetic element of teaching in this message that is not only for our generation, but also for the next generation. That's why as we model this message, as we begin to take this message and it becomes a reality in our life to be free, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And then in verse 18, it says, you're being transformed into his image every day from glory to glory, from one structure to another structure. I pray the structures of the kingdom will be built into our mind, into our life, that we can easily begin to detect the structures that must come under the authority of Christ. So as we allow the life of Christ to rise up, as we allow the life of Christ to begin to dominate and have authority over the thoughts that are in the atmosphere, I believe that we will now live a life that is very, very powerful, that live a life from glory to glory. We thank God. The cycle of death and defeat is come to an end every day in our life. Little by little, I pray that you and I will rise and live victoriously every day. If you listen carefully to what the Holy Spirit is saying to Papa, his will in our life is that we win every day. We win one day at a time. Every 24 hours, we win and we win and we will not continue to live in the cycle of the past, but there will be a freshness in 2023. We will live according to the future that God has for us, because the structures of the kingdom is built into our mind. The structure of the world system is not lodged in our mind. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, it is not lodged in our mind. But now we are now going to live in victory every day. I pray that you, your family, your church, little by little every day, as we take apart the structures of the kingdom, recognize the structures of the world, you and I will live in the victory. That everything that is now under the feet of Christ will also be under your feet. God bless you and have a great week here from us. Hallelujah. The cycle of victory is now yours. God bless you and see you next week.
了。